Is that your wife or your girlfriend? Or? Uh, girlfriend. Girlfriend. That's how long you've been together for? A couple of years. A couple of years. You're probably gonna. You thinking about uh, locking her down, or you're just gonna waste her time, English guy? <laughs> Why are you sweating right now? For no reason. Just... She seems like a lovely lady, and you seem to still like each other, you know? Look at them. They're engaged. They've been together four years. They're still holding hands, huh? Look at that. That's cute. It must hmm? be the t-shirt. It is the t-shirt. She's... Well, she's not grabbing his meat. She's holding his hand. You know what I mean? It's... She's not like this. Oh, Peter. Yeah. You know, she's not... Just holding his... His hand, you know? Who has kids? You have kids, sir? Older guy? How are you? I, I mean, older with respect, not like, oh, fucking old. I mean, I mean, you're obviously older than me, and, unless you just aged horribly, you know what I mean? But... <laughs> What's your name, sir? Al. 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 <laughs> and who are you here with, Al? Your family? Yep. Is uh, any of those your kids? My wife and my son. Your wife and your son. And daughter. And daughter or daughter-in-law? Which one? I go, daughter or daughter? And I goes, yep. That's your, it's your wife, son? Hello? Bastard, hello. He's fucking looking at me, and he's like. This isn't YouTube. I'm not buffering right now. I'm talking right to you. Is that your only child, Al? Just, yeah, you like him? <laughs> it's good, right? How old are you, buddy? 26. 26, why are you, what are you so, what are you so shifty-eyed for? You... Well, that would have been great if you weren't chubby when you did that, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was like, and then a big sweat stain right there. <laughs> great, that's gonna be on film forever. When you're your dad's age, you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> How old are you, dad? 62. 62. You look great for 62. You, you look like shit for 42, but you, uh, <laughs> you do. You look good for 62. I wasn't expecting 62. That's good. And uh, were you in the room when he was born? Yes. Yep. It's, uh, that's, uh, let me tell you something, guys. If you ever have kids, when your wife goes into labor, do your best to not be there. Like, be in the vicinity, you could be in the, uh, you could be in the hospital, you know? You can make her think you're in the room, like, you know, do some sort of voice note on your phone and push, honey, push, and then hit repeat and loop, and then... But when she's giving birth, don't go in that room, because women get crazy when they're giving birth. They say the meanest shit to you, don't they? Because they're in pain, they, they feel that pain, and then they start thinking, I, you're the fucking reason for this pain. <laughs> I hate you with everything in me right now. <laughs> they just get mean, don't they? That's the, here's the problem, is that women think that men don't think that giving birth hurts. Of course it hurts. It has to hurt. I've had shits that hurt. I can only imagine. <laughs> how much worse it would hurt when you're squeezing a human out of you. <laughs> but that's part of the deal, ladies, and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to downplay how painful it is. It's extreme pain. I can only imagine, you know? But the, the positive side to the pain of giving birth is, is that it's physical pain, which means it'll go away eventually. Six, seven weeks later, your vagina will snap back together. <laughs> you'll forget all about it. You'll be walking around, you'll stub your toe, you'll be like, ow, my toe! I'm like, what about your vagina? Fuck that, my toe hurts. <laughs> Physical pain is the best pain you could hope for. I used to box, and I would get black eyes and headaches, and, 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 but after a couple of days, it would go away. I'm not comparing boxing to your box. I'm just saying <laughs> that physical pain goes away, you know? Because when you're giving birth, all you really need to do, ladies, is, is lean back and focus focus on squeezing this person out of you. You don't have to see what we saw in that fucking room. We can't unsee it! 
six, seven weeks later, your vagina's okay, the rest of my life is fucked! <laughs> it's been 26 years, you think Al's forgotten? He's not forgotten shit! I'm scared to go down on chicks to this day. It's been two years, I'm scared, I'm jabbing my way in. I'm like, Psst. It's just, it's, it's, it's the worst thing you could ever see, isn't it, Al? It's like watching your favorite restaurant burn down. I mean, they'll rebuild it, you know. But I'm not eating there again, fuck that, you know, I, uh... That menu's different. They've done all kinds of things. They put a drive through in there now. <laughs> Mexicans working in the back. <laughs> Is he a good kid, Al? Absolutely. Absolutely. Was he a smart child? He was always, that's, your dad really loves you, dude. Because <laughs> my dad would be like, this guy's a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> Either your dad does, either he loves you a lot or he can't stand you and he doesn't want us to know, you know what I mean? Indian dads will say, well, this guy's a fucking idiot. Do you love him? Of course I love him, that's my child. But what a fucking idiot. This, an absolute idiot. <laughs> my daughter's pretty smart. I, uh, I'm impressed by her. She's only two and she's already speaking Spanish and English, which is impressive to me. I wanted her to learn Spanish first because, first of all, she's half Latina and, and we live in California, so, you know, I wanted her to at least know the language of California. <laughs> Spanish is a very helpful language in California. I mean, you go to a restaurant, you want your car back from ballet, you want to know, like, what to say, you know what I mean? So... <laughs> so, you know what I did? I told my ex-wife's family, uh, they're from Ecuador, I said, do me a favor. Please only speak to the baby in Spanish. They were like, no problem. Hey, do you want us to teach her English too? <laughs> nah. I got this. <laughs> Last thing I want is my daughter being born in America and sounding like an immigrant, you know? <laughs> Dada, Jew coming over? <laughs> no, sweetheart, no Jews are coming over. <laughs> Not unless my agent calls. <laughs> And when you do have kids, trust me on this one. Buy your children, buy your babies, buy them educational toys. Best thing you could do. Because they start learning really young. I bought my daughter this toy, and you push the color, and it says the color. You, it'll push it, and it'll be like, it'll push yellow, and it'll be like, yellow, green, blue. But the cool thing in America is all the educational toys have a switch from English to Spanish. I flicked all her toys to Spanish. Now I'm learning Spanish, too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Who's thinking I am? Now when she pushes it, it goes, Amarillo, verde, azul. Now I know how to say yellow, green, and blue in Spanish, but only like an opera singer. <laughs> Let me tell you where this backfired on me. <laughs> A few weeks ago, I was in LA. I needed some yellow paint. I went to Home Depot and, uh, I walked in and there was a Mexican guy working inside. <laughs> inside Home Depot. So that's progress. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Obama. And uh, I knew he was Mexican. First of all, it's LA. Secondly, his back was facing me. He was 5'4", had a giant head. <laughs> There's no neck. It looked like a, a rock'em sock'em robot that hadn't been punched in the stomach. And it, ding. He turned around, his name was Juan, you know what I mean? And Juan, and he had the little Mexico flag right there. And when I see people and I can tell what their comfort language is, I always like to try and greet them in that language uh, for two reasons. So that way, first, they think I speak their bullshit, and that way they won't try and rip me off. And secondly, you know, I just, it, it, it just, it makes them feel comfortable right away. And when I do say something in your language, I try to say it the best way I can so you really believe I speak your language. But the minute you reply, I get all fucked up, because I've run out of words. 
So I see him and I go, Hola Juan, ¿cómo estamos hoy? He's like, Hola, para la cama, 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 And I'm like, alrighty then. Listen, um, I make it look like we need to go back to English, you know, because uh, you're at work and we need to keep it professional. <laughs> so I go, I need some paint. He goes, si, sí, que color? I go, yellow. Si, sí, mira. And he holds up uh, gray and white and shades of gray and shades of white. And I'm like, no, 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 yellow. Si, sí, mira, yellow. No, Juan, that's gray and white and shades of gray and shades of white. No, just say yellow, mira, yellow, yellow. No, no, that's not yellow, yellow. That's fucking gray and white, Juan. <laughs> yellow, mira, yellow, ice, ice. I don't care what your favorite song is right now. I just, <laughs> I just want yellow paint. See, mira, yellow, ice, ice. I didn't know that yellow meant ice in Spanish. I didn't know that. That's not on the toy. <laughs> so I get in this big argument with the guy. I'm like, no, not fucking ice, Juan. Yellow, see, mira, yellow. Stop saying mira, yellow, this is not yellow. Mira, yellow, ice. Stop saying yellow, ice. I don't want yellow, ice. That's disgusting, first of all. <laughs> I just want yellow. Mira, yellow, stop saying mira, yellow. Yellow, yellow, no say, no say, stop fuck. What do you say then? No say. I'm like, ugh. I'm a Rio. <laughs> Turns out he had the same toy at home. He goes, oh, Jumin, yellow. I want to be strict, you know? I want to be strict with my daughter. She's only two, so I can't really gauge how I'm going to be with her yet. Uh, I, I want to be like my parents, but not as crazy. Because Indian parents are a little crazy with their kids, you know? They, they, I, I like, I, and I want to be like a white parent. I love watching white people talk to their kids. White parents have this way of speaking to their children like they're humans. <laughs> it's beautiful to watch, you know? But I think white parents, I, I can't be as lenient as a white parent, because white parents, you take it a little too far, you know? Like, you give your kids options. <laughs> They're a fucking kid, they shouldn't have any options. <laughs> Here's, I, I was in the mall the other day, I saw a white lady in the food court, and she said to her five-year-old son, she goes, sweetheart, what do you want to eat for dinner? And the kid goes, I don't know. Okay, well, when you figure it out, you let mommy know and I'll make it for you, okay? Mm, I love you. <laughs> she asked a five-year-old what he wanted to eat. Not, do you want this or this? What? He could have said, "Any? I want shoes. I want to eat a pair of shoes. <laughs> she would have had to make him a pair of shoes. I'm not, I can't even comprehend, like, I grew up in an immigrant house. You, let me tell you something. In an immigrant house, mom does not, there's no dinner for the adults and dinner for the children. Mom does not care what the fucking kid's like. Mom does not cook for the kids. Mom cooks for dad. <laughs> Whatever dad liked is what you were eating for dinner. That's the way it worked. There <laughs> it doesn't matter what your dad liked, that's what you were having for dinner. It turns out my dad used to love molten hot plates of lava. <laughs> I was the only five-year-old farting fire at five. Just <laughs> They used to call me dragon ass at school. <laughs> but white parents explain things to their kids, you know? They do, you, you take the time to do that. That's nice. Indian parents, they're the worst. If they don't want you to do something, they will make up the most insane story <laughs> as to why you shouldn't do something and scare you into not ever thinking about doing it. And you don't think your parents are creative, so they're like, they couldn't be making that up. <laughs> that must have happened, you know? I'll give you an example. I grew up just outside of Toronto, a small town called Brampton, and uh, B-Town represent. I, uh, <laughs> and, and I grew up in these townhouses, and all the driveways were attached in the townhouses. And at the edge of the driveway was a road, a major road where all the cars can drive. We, uh, we were obviously not allowed to play on the road. We were only, played on the, we were only allowed to play on the driveways, for obvious reasons. Now, this was the white lady next door telling her son not to play on the road. Sweetheart, mommy doesn't want you to play on the road. Why not? Because it's not safe. So? So you could get hurt. I don't care. Well, I do. So? If you get hurt, you'll make mommy sad. Do you want to make mommy sad? 
No. Well, then be a good boy and play in the driveway. Okay. I love you. <laughs> it was so good, she explained it to him. She told him why he shouldn't do it. He, she gave him the consequences as to what could happen. He had all the information he needed to not play on the road. And you know what? He didn't play on the road. Not my dad. This is my dad telling me the same thing. Russell! Don't go on the road. You'll get hit by the car and you'll break apart. <laughs> Not I might get hit by a car. No, I will get hit by the car. Apparently there's only one car in my neighborhood and I was going to get hit by it and I was going to break apart. How the fuck do you break apart? When I was a kid, I thought I was made out of Lego because I was going to break apart one day.